say about someone who gives your life meaning? Dear First Lady, you have made one man, me, the most happy man in the world. Same girl I married, and I'm a, I'm a very lucky fellow. Love Story, The Reagan Letters. Here's Katie Couric. Hello, everyone. What made Ronald Reagan special? His optimism, confidence, love of country? To Nancy Reagan, his wife and constant companion for more than half a century, what made Ronald Reagan special was his devotion and their boundless love for each other. Romance may not be what we associate with politics or even with the competitive real-life world of Hollywood the Reagans once inhabited, but the bond between Ronald and Nancy Reagan was undeniable. Their friends saw it, and the country saw it, during their eight years as America's first couple. She protected him, advised him, worried about him, and he returned that devotion in full measure, something made clear by the publication of a treasure trove of love letters he wrote to her. Letters, notes, cards, telegrams, dating back almost to when they first met, and continuing uninterrupted for decades. Reagan's personality shines through in these letters, addressing my darling wife, glamour puss, Nancy pants, mommy poo, my beloved first lady, and signed, first papa, you're in love, gov, your roommate, your husband. Messages from the heart, and Nancy Reagan saved everyone. Over the next hour, a revealing personal look at a remarkable love story. Ronald Reagan's letters to Nancy, including this one, read for us by Mrs. Reagan herself. This letter was written from the White House on March 4th, 1981. Dear First Lady, as President of the United States, it's my honor and privilege to cite you for service above and beyond the call of duty and that you have made one man, me, the most happy man in the world for 29 years. That's Nancy Reagan reading a letter Ronald Reagan wrote her in 1981 on their 29th wedding anniversary, their first in the White House. She kept that note just as she kept the hundreds of others he wrote her through the years. You may. Ronald Reagan and Nancy Davis met on a blind date of sorts, choreographed by a Hollywood producer. They went to see Mae West. <laughs> and they were out late, and then I guess they just couldn't wait for the next date. It was just... I think it probably uh, was uh, almost love at first sight. He took one look at her, and she took one look at him, uh, and uh, it was love. Love, love. Ronald Reagan's letter-writing campaign to Nancy began almost as soon as they met. It was the early 1950s, and Reagan was busy with his first career, making movies. He wrote this letter to Nancy while filming a movie in Arizona. We asked actor Hal Linden to read it for us. Just a quick line from somewhere south of Tucson, pronounced Tucson. I know why the Confederates lost. They were so damn hot in these uniforms, they couldn't fight. There goes the bugle. Farewell. It didn't take long for the couple to become the buzz of Hollywood. Everybody talked about their love affair, that, and I think a lot of it was with envy. Wednesday, July 15th, 1953. Dear Nancy Pants, I suppose some people would find it unusual that you and I can so easily span 3,000 miles, but in truth, it comes very naturally. Man can't live without a heart, and you are my heart. I love you. The eastern half of us. I know it's... people shake their, shake their head, scratch their head, and can this be real? But uh, it's the most real thing about Ronald Reagan there is. It's a wonderful world. I'm just walking on air. Nancy Davis and Ronald Reagan were married on March 4, 1952. The quiet ceremony was the beginning of a long, loving life together. The first uh, ingredient is love for one another. 
And I think uh, that was uh, present from the very beginning. Truth is, the early years were difficult. Reagan frequently traveled. Movie roles and TV programs took him on the road. He wrote his new bride from lonely hotel rooms across the country. Sunday, March 20th, 1955. My darling, it's time to move on to the next town now, and every move is a step toward home and you. I love you very much, and I don't even mind that life made me wait so long to find you. The waiting only made the finding sweeter. When you get this, we will be almost halfway through the lonely stretch. I love you, Ronnie. In 1954, Reagan accepted a job as host of the new television drama, The General Electric Theater. In addition to his TV appearances, he toured the country as the company's corporate ambassador, visiting GE plants and talking to employees. Again, the intense travel schedule kept the newlyweds apart. March 7th, 1955. Dear Nancy, going wrong way, but still it is one day nearer. I love you, Ronnie. In 1957, they co-starred in their only film together, Hellcats of the Navy. And I began to think maybe you were playing the South Sea Circuit. You knew better. How could I know? Did you give me a post-dated check? Darling, us old salts always say, welcome aboard. And my goodness, are you welcome. I love you, Commander Abbott. They weren't tempted by Hollywood fame at all. Nancy wasn't looking at guys, and he wasn't looking at girls at a party. They were looking at each other. Holidays were always marked with a special letter or card, like this one. He started calling Nancy Mommy after their daughter, Patty, was born. February 14th, 1960. Darling Mommy Pooh. February 14th may be the date they observe and call Valentine's Day, but that is for people of only ordinary luck. I happen to have a Valentine's life, which started on March 4th, 1952, and will continue as long as I have you. I love you very much, Papa. I was immediately struck by the closeness of the couple. Sometimes at dinner, uh, she would reach across the dinner table and hold his hand. Ronald Reagan has one best friend, and he married her. March 4th, 1963. My darling, this is really just an in-between day. It is a day on which I love you 365 days more than I did a year ago, and 365 less than I will a year from now. All my love, your husband. Much of their time together was spent at the ranch outside Santa Barbara. As a former cavalryman, Ronald Reagan was a huge fan of horses, and his wife quickly developed the same affection. He'd go horseback riding, she'd go horseback riding with him, but then he'd go chopping wood. That ranch was the savior of everything, and every day those lovely walks, the two of them together, you'd see them off together. And, uh, a marriage made in heaven. A marriage, a love affair of more than half a century. The book of his love letters, handpicked by her, is her love letter back to him. Her love still so strong and steadfast. It's too difficult for Nancy Reagan to read them in front of anyone else. But that 1981 letter, the one he wrote to her on their 29th anniversary, just after they had moved into the White House, that one was special. The only one she can bring herself to read. Dear First Lady, as President of the United States, it's my honor and privilege to cite you for service above and beyond the call of duty and that you have made one man, me, the most happy man in the world for 29 years. Nancy Davis then went on to bring him happiness for the next 29 years as Nancy Davis Reagan, for which she has received and will continue to receive his undying devotion forever and ever. She's done this in spite of the fact that he still can't find the words to tell her how lost he would be without her. He sits in the Oval Office from which he can see, if he scrooches down, 
her window and feels warm all over just knowing she's there. The above is the statement of the man who benefited from her act of heroism. The below is his signature, Ronald Reagan, President of the United States. P.S. He, I mean I, love and adore you. When we come back, more of the Reagan letters, including what he wrote to Nancy during his years as governor of California and as president. And later, Mrs. Reagan herself talking with me about the love of her life, Ronald Reagan. I mean, it was just perfect, and it was perfect right from the very beginning. on Christmas Day. It's amazing what that four-letter word wife covers when it's applied to you. It means a companion without whom I'm never quite complete or happy. I live in a perpetual warm glow because of you. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you for being my wife. The words of Ronald Reagan read by actor Hal Linden. Ronald Reagan wrote that letter to his wife in 1978. Nancy Reagan says she kept it with all the other letters in a shopping bag. As she was preparing to donate them to the Reagan Library, she sat down to read them, and in a foreword in the new book writes, I was struck by how much they said about him, not just as a president, but as a man, and about us, the love we shared. The letters took me back in time. For instance, to 1966. Dear little mommy, I have to write this because of all our talks about flying and because you'd try to take the blame personally if ever something did happen. God has a plan and it isn't for us to understand. I looked over the first time I flew with him and he was saying a prayer. I said, are you praying the plane doesn't crash? He said, oh no. He said, I'm praying if it does crash, he'll take care of Nancy. Reagan celebrated their 19th wedding anniversary during his second term as governor of California. March 4th, 1971. Dear Mrs. Reagan, there are no words to describe the happiness you have brought to the Gov. By his own admission, he is completely in love with you and happier than ever a Gov deserves. With love and appreciation, you're in love with the Gov. Her devotion to him and his devotion to her was uh, was remarkable. They were absolutely perfect together. If Ronnie owned a shoe store like his dad, Nancy had been pushing shoes. I mean, that's just the way it was. December 1980, Ronnie wrote this letter to Nancy on Christmas Day, the last holiday before they moved to Washington. My beloved First Lady, this problem. I miss you when you first leave the room. I worry about you when you go out the front door. Without you, there would be no sun, no moon, no stars. With you, they are all out at the same time. Ronald Reagan to solemnly swear. Becoming president didn't change his pension for letter writing. On her birthday, the president would slip out of the White House somehow with an aide and go to a card shop and buy maybe 20 or 30 cards, uh, birthday cards, and plant them all over the White House for her to find. Nearly three months after taking office, the assassination attempt, a brush with death that would forever change their lives. When he was shot, she said, you've got to get me in there because... Uh, they don't know about us, what it's like with us. She was always very protective of it. But after the shooting, she became more so. And I think she was very concerned about where he went, what appointments he had outside of the White House. Dear First Mummy, I'm in Wyoming, Montana, or Nevada, depending on what time you read this. Now, I don't want this to come as a shock to you. Well, well, I'll just come right out with it. I'm in love with you. There, I've said it, and I'm glad. First Papa. 
While in Washington, the couple tried to keep their affection for each other private. Only their closest friends knew the depth of their devotion. But illness made life very different for the Reagans. Alzheimer's is a disease that steals one's very memories. In this book, published six years into the former president's illness, Mrs. Reagan writes, there are so many memories that I can no longer share, which makes it very difficult. When it comes right down to it, you're in it alone. Each day is different. You get up, put one foot in front of the other, and go. And love, just love. Alzheimer, she says, is truly a long, long goodbye. But she also says, it's the living out of love. She read one of his love letters for us, a reminder of the way their life together began. Dear First Lady, beginning in 1951, Nancy Davis, seeing the plight of a lonely man who didn't know how lonely he really was, determined to rescue him from a completely empty life. Refusing to be rebuffed by a certain amount of stupidity on his part, she ignored his somewhat slow response. With patience and tenderness, she gradually brought the light of understanding to his darkened, obtuse mind, and he discovered the joy of loving someone with all his heart. Nancy Reagan treasured those letters from her husband. Once sentimental keepsakes, they became what she called her guardians of memory. When we come back, a personal conversation with Mrs. Reagan about the letters and the difficult decision to donate them to the Reagan Library. It's a terrible wrench. I mean, I feel funny about it. I feel like I'm giving away part of me. Ronald Reagan was frequently on the road during his years as an actor and a politician, but he never failed to keep in touch, dropping Nancy a line just to say hello and tell her he loved her. Years later, not long after publishing some of the letters in a book, Mrs. Reagan donated them, hundreds of them, to the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library in Simi Valley, California. She had saved them for years in a shopping bag. I spoke with Mrs. Reagan and the director of the library, Duke Blackwood. I should mention we're in a very interesting setting, and that is we're in front of a, a restaurant booth. Yeah. Can you explain, Mrs. Reagan, the significance of this? That, that booth was from Chasen's. That's the booth that Ronnie and I always sat in, always. And it's the booth where he proposed to me. So this has great memories. It really does. Speaking of memories, the book I Love You, Ronnie, is a wonderful collection of some of the many letters your husband wrote you throughout the years. Why did you decide, Mrs. Reagan, to publish a book containing these letters? Well, because I, I obviously I had to do something. With, I have to tell you, now that I'm delivering them, actually delivering them to the library, it's a terrible wrench. I mean, I feel funny about it. I feel like I'm giving away part of me, you know? I know that you've saved them painstakingly through the I've years. I've saved every since before we were married. I saved everything. How Every, many letters were I have there? no idea. A lot. A lot. But I thought, the more I thought about it, you know, people don't write anymore. They email, they fax, they phone, but they don't write. And all of the art of letter writing, it just seems to have gone. And you get, I mean, you don't really get the flavor of a person from an email. <laughs> or a fax you do from a letter and Ronnie wrote beautiful letters beautiful tell me about how excited you would get when you saw one in your mailbox or delivered to you well we were just married and I you know being apart was terrible so of course I was excited Sunday March 20th 1955 my darling it's time to move on to the next town now, and every move is a step toward home and you. I love you very much, and I don't even mind that life made me wait so long to find you. The waiting only made the finding sweeter. When you get this, we will be almost halfway through the lonely stretch. I love you, Ronnie. He would 
get off the train, wire me from Albuquerque on his way east, then wire me on his way back. So I have all of those, um, which are darling, the darling wires. March 7th, 1955. Dear Nancy, going wrong way, but still it is one day nearer. I love you, Ronnie. Duke, how will these letters be displayed here at the Reagan Library? I know Mrs. Reagan has also said she just hated the thought of these being stuck in a drawer somewhere. Well, what we will first do is arrange them in some order. And then after that's done, we'll preserve them. And then Mrs. Reagan and I will talk which ones that she wants to bring up. And we're going to create a permanent exhibit in the uh, museum to display them. Because like you said, once you see them, it's very different. And people get an emotional response with them. Another thing I think these letters illustrate so poignantly, um, which you have mentioned, is the incredible bond that you and your husband have had. I know people reading this probably sigh on occasion and think, oh, if I'd only gotten one letter like <laughs> this, much less, I know. Uh, you know, I know, hundreds. I know. I've had some, some men come up to me and say, well, you really ruined it <laughs> with, with me and my wife. <laughs> and, and in fact, some of your friends say for the first time they've gotten lovely letters yeah, from their husbands. Yeah, I have a friend who uh, they were celebrating their anniversary and she got a letter from her husband. You say that of all your possessions, this is what you really value the most. Oh, yes, and that's why I feel so funny about giving them up. <laughs> In the introduction, you write, the letters took me back in time to the different moments of the life that Ronnie and I have shared for almost 50 years. And once more, they brought Ronnie back to me in his own words. That's right. That's right. He wrote you an anniversary letter in 1981, citing you for going <laughs> above and beyond the call of duty. Uh -huh. Was there something, in a way, for you, given the current situation and your husband's illness, that was almost... Um, bittersweet for you in reading these letters. Uh -huh. Yeah, it made the current situation harder, really, reading these letters. This letter was written from the White House on March 4th, 1981. Dear First Lady, as President of the United States, it's my honor and privilege to cite you for service above and beyond the call of duty in that you have made one man, me, the most happy man in the world for 29 years. She's done this in spite of the fact that he still can't find the words to tell her how lost he would be without her. He sits in the Oval Office from which he can see, if he scrooches down, her window and feels warm all over just knowing she's there. The above is the statement of the man who benefited from her act of heroism. The below is his signature, Ronald Reagan, President of the United States. P.S. He, I mean I, love and adore you. We'll hear more from Nancy Reagan in a moment. Personal memories of a half-century love affair. And later, a few words on the subject from Ronald Reagan himself. What do you say about someone who gives your life meaning? Love Story, The Reagan Letters. Here again is Katie Couric. Welcome back. Nancy Reagan has often said that her life began with Ronald Reagan. She was in her mid-20s when they met in 1949. He was then in his late 30s and newly divorced. Reagan's first wife was fellow actor Jane Wyman. They met in 1938 while filming Brother Rat, married in 1940, and stayed together for eight years. But there's no question that Nancy Davis, who became the second Mrs. Reagan, was the love of Ronald Reagan's life. That was evident in every letter he wrote to her. In our conversation, I asked Mrs. Reagan if she shared his gift for writing. What about the letters she wrote to him? I found some of the letters in his desk, but uh, I didn't write him the way that he wrote me. I couldn't, I mean, I just couldn't do it. There is something wonderful about getting a letter and opening it and feeling the yeah. feel of the paper yeah. in your fingers yeah. and seeing someone's handwriting, mm -hmm. which makes it so meaningful and personal, obviously. And warmer, yes. Oh, yes. To my wife, 
on Christmas Day, 1978. It's amazing what that four-letter word wife covers when it's applied to you. It means a companion without whom I'm never quite complete or happy. I live in a perpetual warm glow because of you. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you for being my wife. Merry Christmas and all my love, your husband. Since these letters do show what an incredibly loving marriage you all ex have experienced, and, and certainly people will read them with some degree of envy, <laughs> um, what do you think is the secret to such a wonderful marriage you two have enjoyed? I don't know. I, I, I think somewhere in those letters, uh, somebody wrote me and asked that question. And I wrote back that I never, I don't know, I don't, never had a formula <laughs> written down. But certainly you must have thought about it. I didn't really. No? No, I really didn't. I'm, I mean, it was just perfect, and it was perfect right from the very beginning, and I, no, I didn't. Wednesday, July 15th, 1953. Dear Nancy Pants, I suppose some people would find it unusual that you and I can so easily span 3,000 miles, but in truth, it comes very naturally. A man can't live without a heart. And you are my heart. I love you. The eastern half of us. Another thing that struck me as I read these is his love for you only intensified through the years. Things it grew. <laughs> yes, it did. It grew. There's a beautiful letter he wrote on February 14th, 1977, Valentine's Day. He says, Dear St. Valentine, I'm writing to you about a beautiful young lady who has been in this household for 25 years now, come March 4th. My request of you is, could you on this day whisper in her ear that someone loves her very much and more and more each day? Also tell her this someone would run down like a dollar clock without her, so she must always stay where she is. Then tell her if she wants to know who that someone is, just to turn her head to the left. I'll be across the room waiting to see if you told her. If you'll do this for me, I'll be very happy knowing that she knows I love her with all of my heart. Thank you, someone. It's so sweet. I know. One thing that also struck me as I read these, you know, I, I wondered if you felt President Reagan's intelligence would be greater appreciated and his reputation in a way almost vindicated by, by these letters because someone who is not incredibly sharp could not have penned these letters. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. Did that go through your head Absolutely. as you re reread yes, them? There were all, yes, all parts of his character come out in those letters, I think. What do you think about that, Duke? You know, people have, at times, taken some shots at President Reagan. In fact, uh, William Sapphire, I think, said it, said it best in a recent article in the New York Times. Thanks to the recent discovery of a trove of 670 of Correct. his radio speeches written in the late 70s, as the former California governor prepared to run for president, we can see the development of an unconventional political thinker and controversialist. And in fact, they say, to the dismay of all the speech writers, how well written these speeches were, and that yep. the original revolutionary was Ronald Reagan. Absolutely. Um, clearly, there's a reevaluation of Ronald Reagan. and. Um, I think people will start to see a new light. Obviously, in Mrs. Reagan's book, there's the very personal side, but the radio addresses uh, addresses all those other issues. In some corners, uh, he has been considered more of an actor, someone who carried out other people's agendas, who basically was, uh, you know, a vehicle for other people, but didn't have. Um, I don't want to say a complex mind, but I guess that's appropriate. Mm -hmm. Who wasn't a deep thinker. Mm -hmm. um, how did that come to be, you think? I don't know. I, I think once it's said, well, you don't, Katie. Once something is said, then it just snowballs, takes on a life of its own. And that's the way he <clears throat> was and, you know, <laughs> went from there. It wasn't true. 
March 4th, 1967. My darling First Lady, I'm looking at you as you lie here beside me on this 15th anniversary, I'm wondering why everyone has only just discovered you are the First Lady. You've been the first, in fact the only, to me, for 15 years. Thank you for all my life and living, and for happiness as complete as one can have on this earth. I love you so much and so much more each day. Your husband. In terms of your love for him, yes. they're really quite extraordinary. They are. They are. Before we continue, we want to thank actor Hal Linden for reading the Reagan letters for us and note that he has donated the fee we paid him to the Fisher Center for Alzheimer's Research. And our heartfelt thanks to Nancy Reagan and the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library for sharing some of their private home movies and photographs from their personal collection. As we've said, the Reagan Library is now home to the Reagan letters, but there are many more memories on display there as well. When we come back, a sentimental journey. Nancy Reagan takes me on a personal tour. Of course, this, this was the most impressive, I think, when Ronnie was made a knight by the Queen. And that's the picture of us. If there's one thing that Ronald Reagan loved as much as Nancy, it was the rolling hills of Southern California. It was there that he tended to his ranch, with Nancy happily by his side. The California Hills would also be the site of the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library. In November 1991, the former first couple hosted all living presidents for the dedication. It was just three years later, almost to the day, that Reagan announced in a letter to the American people that he was suffering from Alzheimer's disease. Nancy became his chief caretaker and in time, the only person he recognized. In the fall of 1998, Mrs. Reagan gave me a personal tour of the Reagan Library and spoke of her husband's legacy. Do you feel as if he was, he's still underestimated? No, not anymore. Yeah. So you feel vindicated in that way? Yes, in, the, in a way, I'm, I'm sorry that he doesn't, uh, that he doesn't know things that are being said about him or written about him. You know, I, I wish he did know. But he had always had such incredibly enthusiastic supporters, didn't he? Yes, and even people who didn't agree with him liked him. Mrs. Reagan, thank you very much for having us here. You're we, welcome. I'm glad you could come. This is a fascinating room, and there's yes. so many different kinds of gifts that you yes. all received. Yes. What sort of are you trying to do? Mrs. Reagan, in terms of showing all these gifts to people who come to the museum? Well, we're trying to get as many up from the basement as are down there. And when you, get, you know, when you have 100,000, it's, <laughs> it's a little hard to find space. But, uh, I mean, all, all of them are so, are so special. That Gorbachev gave Ronnie that at the summit. The saddle. Mm-hmm. And that was when the INF Treaty was signed. What do you think of when you see the saddle given to your husband from Mikhail Gorbachev? I think of the 87 summit and how exciting that was. The whole Russian experience was very special. In the beginning, these two men had a chemistry that hit, that was just there, but Reykjavik was a turning point. We have an agreement, Mr. President! You knew that because of the expression on your husband's face. When he came what out, yes. Why? What did it tell you? that he was mad. He very seldom got mad. But uh, he had called before and said, everything's going wonderfully. I'll be home for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and then, evidently, they went back in to sign. And Gorbachev said, well, of course, you'll give up SDI. My husband said, no. And he believes so strongly in SDI or Star Wars, uh -huh. is it? Uh -huh. And as it turned out, it was the right thing to do. And Gorbachev knew from then on he couldn't push him. What was your relationship like? With Did Gorbachev? I liked him. He was a very warm man. Good sense of humor, even though you couldn't really understand him. <laughs> <laughs> but you got that feeling. Right. You know. Raisa was a different story. Raisa was a different <laughs> was a different story, yes. 
She was a dedicated socialist, and she wanted to lecture you. But she was, very, she was, she was a very strong woman. And you had the feeling that if he ever faltered, she would be right there to push him back up. Well, some people might say the same thing in a complimentary way about you and, and the president. I'd, they had no fear about my husband ever faltering. <laughs> <laughs> You know what's interesting about all these gifts is they seem to represent a real moment in history. Yes, this is from Mitterrand, and it plays both our national anthems. It's so beautiful. Isn't it beautiful? And this is from Margaret Thatcher, right? And this is right? from Margaret Thatcher. Your husband and you really both share a really nice relationship with Margaret Thatcher. Yes, yes. She's a very special lady like Gorbachev lady Thatcher and my husband had an immediate connection immediate now you still have contact with Mrs. Thatcher yes oh yes mm -hmm. and she's been extremely supportive to you oh, all very very she's very thoughtful and very supportive that's a beautiful gift these things are from I know the Vatican yes these are from the Pope and um all this from the Pope. He's a very strong personality, very warm. It's hard to put into words unless you see him and are with him. We had three visits with the Pope, two with my husband, and one alone, which I've never gotten over. That was really quite an experience. I always um, connected the two of them. He was, he was shot at about the same time my husband was, and um, they just seem so much alike. I don't know. What, what well, is it? It's his, his, his personality, his the strength of his character. He's a wonderful man. Over here is a very impressive <laughs> array. It, it yes. is, it is, it is. Of course, this, this was the most impressive, I think, when Ronnie was made a knight by the queen, and that's the picture of us the belt, the belt, <laughs> the necklace. <laughs> yeah. I, that, you see, that's Freudian. I said to Ronnie, gee, that's so big. You can't get that. I, I could wear that as a belt. I think it would take four <laughs> Mrs. Reagans to fill that belt, I hate to tell you. <laughs> well, I never got anywhere with it, but it was a good idea at the time. It's beautiful. Yes. You all got to be quite friendly with the royal family. Yes. And with Prince Charles. Prince Charles. Yes, and I went over to his, for his wedding, and only the English can put on a wedding like that. I'll never forget it. It was beautiful. Some of the gifts I know that have really touched you are the ones from children. Like yes. the plates over here and the t-shirts. Yes, and yes. All the just say no. What sort of evidence have you seen that it was something that was really worthwhile? The letters, the letters that I got. I mean, if, when you get your first letter from somebody, some child, saying that you saved their lives, that's pretty nice. Did it bother you when, when people sort of made fun of the whole campaign and were cynical about it? Well, yes, it did, but then it all, I, I, I knew it was doing good. Did your husband help you through that? He helped me through anything, everything. When people ask you that question, you know, about your husband's legacy and what you want it to be and what he wants it to be, what do you say? Well, I suppose that he ended the Cold War and that he, he gave people back a good feeling about themselves and the country and it was just a good feeling. Well, a lot of people are out there praying for you and, and the president and wishing you both all the best. And I'm really grateful to you for showing us the museum. I'm glad you came. And it feels good for you to be here as well. Mm-hmm. Sometimes bittersweet. It brings back a lot of memories. Yes, it does. I would like to ask you, what's your husband really like? Oh, 
That should only oh. take you three quarters of an hour. Yes, answer. how long yes. you got? <laughs> well, he's really like what he appears to be really like. He's, um, he's a wonderful man with, as I say, with tremendous uh, integrity and courage and tenderness. And um, every woman should be as lucky as I am. <laughs> The chemistry is that, as far as I'm concerned, I never like it when she's away from me. I realize the necessity for it, but um, I think we're much happier when we're together. There's Nancy Reagan, same person as Nancy Davis a, a number of years ago? Sure. Uh, uh, yes, uh, same girl I married, and I'm uh, a very lucky fellow. Do you ever, ever, in a moment's notice at the end of a long day of campaigning, think to yourself, oh, why didn't Ronnie just stay the host of the General Electric Theater and let me go about being an actress? No, I never wanted to continue being an actress after I got married, ever, ever. No, I, I, I've seen too many marriages uh, break up, and I, I didn't want to take that chance. <laughs> What do you say about someone who gives your life meaning? What do you say about someone who's always there with support and understanding? Someone who makes sacrifices so that your life will be easier and more successful. But what you say is that you love that person and treasure it. The presidency wouldn't have been the joy it's been for me without their there beside me. And that second floor living quarters and the White House would have seemed a big and lonely spot without her waiting for me every day at the end of the day. So, Nancy, in front of all your friends here today, let me say thank you for all you do. Thank you for your love. And thank you for just being you. When you look back on your remarkable life together, all these triumphs and very difficult times along the way as well, what's the one memory that pleases you most? that I married Ronnie. <laughs> Nothing beats that. Nothing beats that. What would have happened to me if I hadn't married Ronnie? Oh, I think you probably would have gotten uh, married okay. No, no, because there's never going to be another Ronnie. <laughs> Ronald Reagan won the hearts of many Americans during his years in public life, and there's no question that Nancy Reagan's was chief among them. His devotion to her was extraordinary as well. His letters to her over the years leave no doubt about that. Their love for each other had all the intensity, the giddiness, the single-mindedness of a teenage crush, except that it lasted a lifetime. As a couple, they accomplished great things together, perhaps much more than either one alone might have. But in the end, even being president and first lady was not nearly as important to Ronald and Nancy Reagan as being husband and wife. I'm Katie Couric. Thanks for joining us. Do I love